Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, welcome back, guys, to the class of marketing management. And for tonight's session, we will cover chapter 9, identifying market segments and targets, and also chapter 10, the brand equity uh, management. So, from uh, for the chapter 9, on the identifying market segment and targets, supposedly you have done the assignment developing market segments and tonight we will uh, go deeper uh, onto this topic so the objective of this chapter is to understand what ways can company divide the consumer market into segments and then well, how should business market be segmented so last time you segment the consumer market so Tonight we are going to cover the business market, so the companies. And how should a company choose the most attractive target markets? And what are the requirements for effective segmentation? And what are the different levels of market segmentation? So as you cover before, the basis for segmenting consumer market, we can uh, in identifying market segment, it means that we try to identify a group of customers which have similar need and wants. Yeah, so you can group uh, uh, the, the the objectives is to identify from all of the coordinates of customer. What I why I say coordinates because from F, from the transaction, from the demographics, from all the variables, that variables is considered a coordinates. Two variables meaning two coordinates, uh, meaning two uh, axes that uh, determine the coordinates. If the variable is ten, meaning that there are ten axes that will determine the coordinates in 10 axes ten axis or 10 variables so in determining the market segment we can segregate the segmentation using geographic segmentation we can also use the demographic segmentation psychographic segmentation and behavioral segmentation from geographic segmentation, you can uh, separate, separate the segmentation into the nations. Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Myanmar, Cambodia. So there is segmenting the customer into five nations. Or by the states. Uh, uh, Jawa Barat, Jakarta, Jawa Timur. Regions, yeah, Kebayoran Baru, uh, apa, what do you call it, uh, uh, Menteng, and etc. So, basically, you can determine your number of cluster using the geographics. Okay, let's put it. The cluster K is five. Because you see, there are five nations in the data. The other way of uh, segmentation is demographic segmentation. You want to separate the cluster into income. So you put high income, uh, very high income, high income, uh, 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 middle income, low income, very low income. And then you identify the range of the income for each of the uh, income level. So you put it into five. So you want to see what is the profile of customer within that range of income. 
So because your objective is the demographic segmentation. Or you can put also ages. So people with is uh, uh, above 50 years old, 40 to 50, 30 to 40, etc. So you can uh, develop demographic segmentation. You 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 segregate you 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 se segregate the age the age and then you want to know the profile of the customer within the age range. And then you can also do a psychographic segmentation. Psychographic segmentation is more into the uh, what is the achievement of the uh, target segment, the self-expression, the ideals, the idea, the motivations. Yeah. So you can see that uh, people who is very successful, successful, mid, uh, medium, mediocre, very mediocre. So what is the profile of very successful people? So basically, uh, <coughs> in uh, de developing the cluster is very essential in the beginning of the research. Usually the research starting with the clustering. Yeah? If you conduct the mixed model research that combining quantitative research and qualitative research, the first research supposedly quantitative research which is clustering so clustering is the very basic uh, market research that we need to conduct before other kind of research okay and then behavioral segmentation you would like to understand uh, who are the initiator the influencer decider buyer the user yeah so what is the profile of each segment is jolanda is initiator or influencer or decider or buyer okay so my next question is if you develop the clustering model how do you know that carmelita is the initiator or influencer or the decider how do you know that because Carmelita is not within the data let's say Carmelita is outside the data so the data you, you conduct the clustering you identify the initiator influencer decider the buyer the user and then there comes Carmelita where is Carmelita belongs to how do you know that which cluster Carmelita belongs to? Any idea? So let me illustrate it. Insert uh, this is the This is the axis, and then this is the okay. This is cluster A, cluster B, cluster C, and this is cluster D. And there is Carmelita. Where is Carmelita? Uh, this is Carmelita. Let me put Carmelita here. This is A, B, C, and D. Okay, let me put it over here. Okay. If this is the coordinate of Carmelita, this is the group of cluster A, group of cluster B, group of cluster C, and group of cluster D. And this is Carmelita coordinates. My question is, which cluster do Carmelita belongs to? C. Cluster C. C? How do you know that? 
close it the nearest very close closest yeah yes so carmelita belongs to cluster c because of the distance between uh, uh, carmelita to each of the uh, centroid so this is what we call euclidean distance euclidean distance all right so i will not cover uh, more into the detail on to how to calculate the euclidean distance uh, maybe some other time but that is the way how we identify whether the customer is belong to which cluster okay so in the geographic segmentation uh, we develop we, we, we separate the customer into nation states etc and in my previous company in Nielsen uh, we also create a prism so we create the cluster of uh, education family urbanization race and mobility this is the uh, the variable that we use to develop customer segmentation in Nielsen so what is uh, so the, the basic uh, clustering variable that we use the education of the customer the family life cycle the urbanization race and mobility so many company many industry develop their own uh, clustering models depend on the data that they have and then in the graphic segmentation we also learn how to develop personas yeah young digerity is a personas Bell way boomers is a persona the cosmopolitan is the persona so the persona shows the high level a uh, high level profile of the cluster name of the uh, your, your, your cluster so uh, wait a second wait a second uh, wait a second Mam, 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 suara kekerasan, mam. Alright, excuse me. So, like young digerity, young digerity are the nation tech savvy singles and couples living in a fashionable neighborhoods on the urban fringe, affluent, highly educated, ethically mixed. They live in areas typically filled with trendy apartments and condos, fitness club and clothing boutiques, casual restaurants, and all types of bars, from juice to coffee to microbrew. So, this is what we call persona. The persona that explain high level, uh, that explain the profile of the segments, uh, using all of the variables within the uh, uh, personas so that is what we call a personas a persona a of, classification gitu ya pak yes so hmm. that represents all of the variable within the customer let's say the income the income is very high yeah the income is very high family status he mostly married cap married married people or small family with one children education is uh, very high master degrees and then the, uh, the 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 location of the family house is in elite areas so we can name the the the, the personas like uh, what we call it personas like uh, uh, the metropolis family something like that or the 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 persona is the the person 
love to use uh, gadget very very updated on the highest technology and then high income uh, so we can name the persona digital savvy customer yeah, so we would like to find what is the essence of the profile what is the essence of the persona that describe the person the most so there is a persona yeah. or a, 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 a businessman that travel a lot and then when he travel he use first class all the time and then uh, working in a very prestigious companies so we name it business traveler or premium traveler so that describe that describe the person the, the profile the most so it is not uh, not just something that written on the profile but something that must be uh, explored something that uh, generated from the personas from the profile that domi do, uh, that is dominant within the profile so that is how we generate the personas so far so good any questions all right so there are also demographic segmentations yeah ages life stage uh, like from the single married and then uh, sing, uh, uh, small family uh, and then big family so life stage there's a life stage a gender male female but currently it is currently quite ambiguous because there are now several genders available <laughs> All right, uh, and then income, uh, high income, mid income, low income, generation, race, culture, uh, life cycle, state and age. Yeah, there are also you can also combine the demographic segmentation, like uh, male with high income, male with low income. Uh, sometimes people use that too so yep uh, married and divorce life stage as well uh, and then gender sometimes gender is not uh, recommended because people say this as a uh, 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 sensitive er uh, area that we do not use gender in clustering anymore so men and women want to treat equal yeah, so uh, there is some um, dispute on that so generation we have their millennials gen x baby boomers silent generation race uh, uh, asian american african and then psychographic uh, of psychology or personality traits uh, segmentation we can also use the uh, thinker achiever experiencer believer and behavioral segmentation marketer divides buyers into groups of the basis of their knowledge attitude towards something uh, response to a product so basically you can do segmentation to all kind of your objective yeah let's say you want to cluster people who from uh, who is using androids whatever happened using androids and then people that is converting from androids to iphone and people who is converting from iphone to androids or people who is loyal to iPhone uh, to iPhone so you would like to see what kind of profile 
that uh, describing the 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 behavioral segmentation. Let's say people converting from Android to iPhone. What kind? What type of profile do you, do they have? Okay, they have uh, people who just uh, moving from low income to mid income, something like that, or from the mid income to high income. They start to change their phone uh, type or phone uh, brand. Yeah. Or uh, so basically, clustering we can identify. Uh, we can identify the profile of the customer uh, uh, towards their behavioral segmentation. So basically, you can do anything with the clustering. Anything. And then you can elaborate the people with the initiator types influencer types decider types buyer types user types and from the model that generated you can identify whether olivia is a buyer whether jolanda is a user whether gisela is the decider yeah. after you use the euclidean distance to find whether gisela is close to buyer or gisela is close to influencer so you can conduct different campaign when you identify that he is a buyer so this is the kind of campaign you you prepare for the buyer or whether Gisela is an influencer you can conduct different campaign for a, an influencer not a campaign for a buyer but a campaign for influencer there therefore that you can generate a personalized campaign for each of the targets uh, the, the 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 market yeah so you have an you let's say you put them all as a target the initiator is different campaign influencer is a different campaign decider different campaign buyer different campaign and user different campaign so when you identify all the targets persona so you put a personalized campaign to each one of them because they have different needs and different wants so you develop a campaign with the value proposition suit with their needs and wants okay so in in the user and usage related variables yeah a lot of variables that we can put into the clustering occasion uh, uh, let's say use you, you develop the segment into uh, five time five type of events let's say uh, you would like to know who spend the most on each of the events let's say Ramadan sale New Year sale uh, Singapore sale and then uh, midnight sale etc there are occasions what is the profile of customer that spend their transaction the most into each of the type of event so you can personalize com you can put a personalized campaign to Olivia for the midnight sale because you identify that Olivia Euclidean distance is very close to the midnight sale okay uh, I think do you guys want to know deeper into the Euclidean distance how to conduct the Euclidean distance Okay, let me let me give you some clue so you are not wondering how to do that okay wait a second
okay okay uh, let me check Let me find a simpler one. Hmm. Wait a second. Okay, this can explain. All right. Oh, this one. Okay. Okay. All right. It's basically here. Euclidean distance. second sector 8 advancing okay no no let me explain it from here okay Euclidean distance how to calculate the Euclidean distance uh, let's say this A coordinates is uh, 1 uh, 1 and 2 yeah? and then this is the B is uh, 3 point uh, 3 and 1 let's say let's say put it in here uh, Excel So first, okay, close. Okay. Okay. So Euclidean distance is. Uh, the objective of Euclidean distance is to calculate the distance between one coordinate to another. Uh, 
let's say uh, let's put it like this uh, sorry okay so uh, a coordinate is x in y b coordinate and c coordinates let's say here a a is uh, x is 1 and y is 3 b is 3 and y is 1 okay so we would like to calculate the distance between a and b so how to do that So, the, from the, uh, the, the distance is the root of coordinate x minus uh, y. Uh, power of 2 and then uh, 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 exponential 0 0.5 let me try it. Uh, 1 minus uh, the x first x is 1 minus 3 and then uh, Power of two, power, no, power of two, and then uh, plus the three minus one, and then yes, power of two. And then it is power of zero point five, one point four. That is the distance between A into B. So that is how to calculate the distance. So when when we have this is only two variables. Jerry. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Coming. Uh, if if the e two minus e three is the power of two, right? Yes. You you type power of one, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry. Power yeah. of two. All right. Two point eight. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. So, this is only with the two variables. If we use two variables, meaning that we have the transaction two transaction so we can use uh, this type but if there are a lot of transaction so there will be more than that yeah let's say x uh, is if it is more then it is more compre comprehensive yeah so we would like to, there are centroid for each of the cluster so we would like to to, to calculate when you conduct the clustering, you identify the centroid, the number you got from the clustering model, the data, the, the, the number there for each cluster, that is the centroid of the data. So when there is Jolanda with her transaction, you, and you also would like to calculate the distance, so you used all Jolanda transaction to as an A and the centroid transaction as a B and you calculate the Euclidean distance for that uh, transaction let's say like this mm. uh, so let's say A, B and C Let's say C is 1 and 1. 
Okay. So ka. B to C, B to A. So B to A is 2.8. B to C is uh, 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 C, B to C is 2. Yeah. So which cluster do Jolanda belongs to? If Jolanda is B, uh, if Jolanda is B and there are A and C, so let's say this is, okay. so this is C, cluster C, cluster A, then this is Jolanda. So which cluster Jolanda belongs to? B to A is 2.8. B to C is 2. So Jolanda belongs to? B to C. B to C. Yes. Jolanda belongs to C. Jolanda is B. The cluster yeah, is A C. and C. C. So Jolanda belongs to C. C. Yes. So this is how Euclidean distance work. Capish? Alright. Alright. So, so there. So, so there is, uh, okay. Uh, and then, all right. Next is the marketing funnel. Uh, so, when you have a clustering model and uh, you also would like to see the how do they respond to the marketing funnel let's say from cluster A the people who is aware of the product is around 96% or 65% of the uh, customer aware of the product and from this cluster 46% ever tried from this cluster the return trial 62% etc and so on and so on so using the clustering model you can also identify the marketing funnel okay so you can say that this cluster is highly aware this cluster is uh, not aware this cluster is uh, average awareness yeah. but from that point you can see also the profile people from this cluster is low awareness but high transaction meaning that they have high frequency, high ticket size. Yeah. So if you would like to target a market, you want to target a market with high ticket size, high frequency, high volume. So you would like to target this cluster because the awareness is low but the ticket size is high. Meaning that you need to conduct better campaign to them that uh, give value proposition that suits their needs and wants because this segment gives higher ticket size. So you can put marketing funnel into the clustering as well. All right. And you can also break down the segmentation using the clustering from the aware customer who are trying and not trying how many percent are there so in remember i always ask you to export the number into excel so you can identify the percentage of population or the percentage of transaction compared to the other yeah so this cluster is uh, you can identify what is the problem within the cluster are they uh, less in trying or very high in trying trial 
or uh, high in rejection or low in rejection so that for that you can see the area for improvement within each of the cluster so this cluster the problem is awareness yeah they 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 are very potential the awareness is uh, uh, very low but the 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 the, the uh, ticket size is very high so the problem is unaware customer so you need to put better campaign or the problem is rejection yeah so you need to improve the product the problem is the product not in the campaign or the problem is uh, in the uh, 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 repeated customer no not from the from the people that already buy the product only 10% that repeat the product so loyalty is very low so your campaign should uh, you should improve the product to increase customer loyalty yeah so there is on the clustering also the RFM the previous assignment RFM can be conducted within the cluster as well so this cluster uh, for this cluster is the targeted segment when you have the targeted segment but there are some customer that the recency is very very long time ago not within the recent months anymore so what should you do to them because they are your targeted segment you can conduct the hybrid model of segmentation first you conduct clustering model and then you conduct RFM model to each of the cluster okay this is my target customer and then but 50% of them is not loyal anymore because the recency is one or two not three anymore or they are recent with us but frequency is very low and monitoring is also very low so from the segmentation of the cluster you can deep dive into recency frequency and monitoring so you can break down the segmentation into another segmentation into another segmentation until you have a micro segmentation of your customer micro segmentation any questions Kapish? はい。わかる。はい、わかりました。はい。And はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。は
This is the financial statements. Hmm. Why financial statements? Okay. Let's find another clustering. Uh, open. Right. Last time Irwan uh, used the uh, 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 so last time I put only for you to develop the average number. So that is the basic clustering model. Uh, new, 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 new. Where is it? Uh, analyze the script, not descriptive. Uh, to means clustering cluster yep so I put here let's say income and then average balance and then uh, average months to date tenor okay and then uh, can you put Income still in that, right? Okay, so okay, no worries, just like that. Okay, put into three uh, three cluster. Okay. So in here, we develop the uh, the the average. Uh, let's say income is 15 million, 10 million, fifth, uh, uh, this is this is categorical, kah? yeah, in million, so average uh, balance, tenor, etc. So this is using the average of the variable, the average number of the variable. But what Irwan did, he di put it into different level. So he used the uh, using k means, but using how do you do that, Irwan? Options. Uh, no, I go uh, back to. I I think I used the data. Wait. Data. Um, or maybe analyze, I forget. Analyze. We find variable, Pak. Oh, okay. On the clustering, kah? No, no, Pak. In data, yes. we find variable properties. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, let's put it here. And then? Continue. And then input the relevant variable. Input the? All the numerical variables. Yes, already, already there. Oh, okay. And yeah, continue. 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 And then. Wait, but my expenses is different. Oh, wait, wait. Hey, hey, hey. wait. Okay. Let me open. Okay, no worries. But the concept is very nice. So Irwan get the average number of every variable. And then he changed all the variables into the standard deviation from the uh, number into the average number. So if the standard variance is, let's say, the average number is 50 and the, score, the, the, the standard deviation is 5, so when the score is 60, then 
the the number of the variable is plus two but if the score is 40 the variable of the variant uh, the, vari the variable score is minus two because plus two is considering the uh, two times the standard deviation from the average number and minus two is uh, below to the standard deviation against the average number so there is another approach on doing the clustering all right no worries everyone so uh, okay so there is on the clustering model so there is only just refresh for the uh, uh, refreshness refreshness to you uh, that this is highly important for you all to understand uh, how to conduct the clustering model good after the clustering model you can conduct another segmentation another segmentation there are a lot of segmentations from the clustering you can add uh, using the rfm to identify the loyalty of the customer within the, 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 the cluster how many customer is loyal to your product how many customer is not loyal to your product yeah. loyalty is cons uh, when we learned last week is the person who buys a second uh, repeat repeat repeating order second purchase third purchase yeah but I put it into total number of RFM so the customer which is uh, recent and then uh, buying more and uh, volume high high in vo high in frequency and high in volume I call it loyal customer and the lower one is when it, they have uh, not recent anymore uh, not repurchase and volume of transaction is small so there is uh, non loyalty customer all right any questions on that olivia you got the clustering uh, model understand Trying to process. Trying to process. <laughs> All right. No worries. You are a group with the same group with Irwan or with Sachin? Sachin, Sachin but. Okay. All right. And then. Uh, may I have a question? Yes, Inda. Uh, actually, he's regretting our assignment. Uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm apologize mm -hmm. if I skip your explanation previously so in uh in there we have frequent recency frequency and also monitoring which is in in the real number and also we have rfm in the number just one two three like uh, if we do clustering which number that we should uh, input to the sbss part that is not for clustering oh, that's not for clustering yeah, that is for rfm Oh, it's, it's RFM is for the cluster or for a uh, overall customer um, so RFM can stand be a standalone segmentation process or can mm. be done for specific cluster oh, okay. let's say uh, this we, we do the clustering first then we do RFM you can but you can also do RFM first oh, okay. without any without clustering, any clustering. So mm -hmm. basically this is a segmentation process. But you can do it hybrid model. Meaning you can do clustering because let's say in the loyalty okay in the loyalty you identify that this category of product is uh, is very determined for the company profitability okay let's say in a bank uh, the uh, credit card 
transaction is very uh, critical for company uh, profitability so you would like to have the RFM model for the specific product so you conduct RFM model for a specific product how re what is customer recency uh, uh, frequency and monitoring yeah. so basically RFM is uh, aiming into specific product specific cluster specific transaction specific 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 basically because when we talk loyalty or when we talk frequency or we will we, and when we talk about recency we cannot talk about all product must be specific product oh he is recent in all product we cannot say that recent into one product yeah loyalty <laughs> into one product not loyalty into all of the product we cannot we cannot do that yeah so Basically, RFM, we, we do RFM after we identify the cluster, after we identify the product. You can do RFM, the first time RFM, if you already select the product, not all the product. Kapish? All right. Any other questions? Okay. So, there is segmentation into the consumer market next is how about the business market what about when your customer is not individual but a company you can create your segmentation using demographics operating variables their purchasing approach their uh, situational factors their personal characteristics what is the variables onto that on the demographic uh, you can identify the data of the industry what kind of industry the company size the location yeah oh this company is okay let's say in the uh, during pandemics which industry that uh, positively influenced by the COVID-19? Yes, I mean like that. So we would like to understand how many industry is there that positively influenced by the pandemic. And then there are also second cluster that neutrally influence and then negatively influence you can conduct five five clusters yeah highly positively influence positively influence average influence negative influence highly negative influence yeah how do you know that so you put the industry there okay there are five industries there. You put a dummy variable into your data on industry data. Okay. So this industry is highly positively influenced by the pandemic. The company size. Okay. Uh, and then the location. For you to identify which industries highly influenced positively by the pandemic using the clustering model and then the operating variable what kind of technology they do, do they have internet communication technology uh, IOT technology etc okay and then their purchasing approach uh, do they have a, a, a purchasing function organization or not or do they have general purchasing policy or not situational factors yeah uh, is it uh, the minimum order quantity 
uh, is it small or high yeah urgency is it uh, urgent or not urgent and then the personal characteristic yeah the buyer and seller similarity their attitude toward the risk are there are they risk taker are risk averse and their loyalty uh, that they are they have very loyal to their suppliers so when you conduct the clustering of these data if there is a if it is a categorical data you can do a dummy variable to the data yeah what is dummy variable have i an, uh, 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 explained it before dummy variable not yet oh, okay not yet all right what is dummy variable okay let's say you are uh, uh dummy variable how do that okay industry industry let's say industry is uh, agri business and then food and then electronic and then entertainment okay so to conduct dummy variable you need to uh, use what we call dummy variable transpose the dummy variable how to do that is using bino a uh, binary if this one equal to this then one if not zero so i think i put the formula into the data yeah okay uh, okay F uh, this is E okay so when they are not belong to that industry they will be not zero so you put the data like this into the clustering model yeah so this one you put the data to identify which industry belongs to that cluster or which category belong to that cluster because SPSS can only process numerical data so to process the string data or non-numerical data you conduct what we call dummy variable data Kapish? Okay. Okay. All right. So there is uh, the 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 variables that we use into the uh, using the when we use when we are going to cluster the business market. All right. So this is the step in segmentation process. Yeah. So the uh, to identify the needs, to identify the segment, to identify the attractiveness to identify the profitability uh, to identify the uh, value proposition uh, we, our value proposition supposedly need uh, uh, see, uh, suit their needs and wants and then a uh, storyboard yeah and marketing mix uh, so we identify the need and wants for the product price promotion place etc so basically this all will be answered within the clustering model so for effective segmentation they are supposedly measurable substantial accessible differentiable and actionable measurable the size we understand the we can we can get the average number because there are all number yeah we identify the standard deviation into the average number they are also substantial yeah uh, 
uh, we can identify the segment that is profitable and large for our target segments if they are uh, a small so when you you put an effort to a small group that is useless yeah not sustainable you are not going uh, to, to get a sustainable competitive advantage and then accessible you can access them you can reach them you can use you understand the channel to reach them differentiable between each cluster highly differentiated actionable you can put an attractive campaign to them you can put an effective program to them and then for the business market or business segment you also can identify the attractiveness using the Porter 5 forces what is the power of supplier there what is the power of by a, a customer there what is the threat of new competitor there what kind of product substitution there so you can s find the attractiveness of the cluster using the five forces yeah what is the rivalry among the competitor there so different kind of clustering yeah uh, but this data uh, usually not I within the second secondary data this data uh, should be done uh, using another approach maybe let's say maybe like a uh, focus group discussion or more into qualitative research yeah uh, new entrance there is interview there yeah and then uh, uh, a threat of substitute product so there should be an interview to a panel to a respondent about this so you identify the cluster and then you want to know how attractive the cluster is you conduct a focus group discussion or you conduct an interview uh, toward a subject matter expert that represent the cluster yeah. So there are mixed model, mixed method approach into the uh, segmentation to identify the attractiveness of the segment. And then we evaluate the market segments, uh, possible level of segmentation. Yeah. There are maybe individual segments like a customer and then the, into the full market coverage, uh, mass market. Yeah. So there are also legal issues there. We cannot label the customer uh, just like that. So be careful on to the labeling because you put a label into somebody else uh forehead yeah this is konoha this is sen this is another village something like that so you put a label into someone else forehead that is very dangerous so you must label your persona you must put the persona in a good manner in a good uh word yeah don't put this like a uh, what we call that a smoke heavy smoker chain smoker so there is kind of root yeah so be careful on labeling your uh, customer let's say you are a uh, philip morris you want to segmentize the customer into a heavy smoker chain smoker starter smokers something like that so that is kind of intriguing so and also a uh, vulnerable groups yeah uh, be careful on that this advantage group and potentially harmful products 
there are ethical issues there right so that's on the segmentation any questions on the segmentation capish Actually, I had a question on this uh, marketing okay. funnel, All right. which we discussed. Yes. Okay, this uh, marketing funnel, uh, actually I don't know this color combination, what does it mean? But, so, I was just uh, wondering, what does that mean that, uh, okay. that the cascading effect which happens from aware till most often used? Alright, so in every cluster, there are population, remember? Yes. So, one cluster population, let's say 100 people. Okay, they have a similarity there. 100 people with the similarity of the transaction. Yeah. And but there is also when you put awareness, how many percent of that 100 people aware of your product? only let's say a uh, population is uh, only 65 percent aware of your product okay only 65 percent aware of the brand a and then for uh, cluster b 76 percent aware of the product and then from the 65% that aware of the product, 46% from them try the product. 62% of the people that try the product uh, are recent, within the last one week. Yeah. And how many percent? Uh, of the recent trial become occasional user let's say 76 67% uh, and how many percent of them become regular user from the 67 50% so that is the funnel yeah so that can also be identified when we conduct the clustering so how many so what is the population that aware 96 from the total population 150 something like that how many percent ever tried 63 how many percent that is recent trial 29 occasional user 18 regular user 12 most often use 6 so that is into the clustering so Later, the, the clustering result will show you for the awareness is 0 0.65. Remember, I told you to export the data into the Excel for you to see the number in a comma, two digits behind the comma. So that is uh, 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 to identify the marketing funnel from the clustering model. Got it, Bendu? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Any other questions? 